this is part three of the Master Colors program. And, and uh, that, of course, is my cell phone number right there. And then you can reach me through either the Worldwide Hair Colorist Association or through Chromastics. Uh, those are my emails right there. <clears throat> this number that you see here is also uh, the Hair Color Hotline um, uh, uh, and Hair Color Helpline. And for those of you who, who tune in and are not aware of it, I'm pretty good about all of the different types of uh, products that are out there, hair color products, and I can answer questions about most of them, and I do, if you have any. Uh, okay, let's, let me just move here. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about today. Only four topics. The level system, I want to tell you where, they, where it comes from and a few interesting facts about the level system. And then, in really important, I think, is uh, eye color and skin tone and uh, why they're important and what they have to do with um, the hair color when you're working, when you're doing hair color. Uh, the third thing I want to talk about is texture and why it's very important. And then the last thing is translucent and opaque. Um, a lot of people don't quite understand what these mean. Um, and they have very specific meanings, translucency and opaqueness with regard to hair coloring. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna start with the level system. And by the way, y'all can interrupt with the Q&A at any time if you, if you would like. Now, the level system, remember that the level system is based on um, light reflection, uh, light from the sun. And if there's no light from the sun whatsoever, then it's a zero on, on the scale. If, it's, if it is full sunlight, then it's 100 on the scale. The scale goes from zero to 100. Now, um, human beings, that us, we can only see about 40% uh, of uh, light reflection. And what this means is that when we see a reflection of about eight, nine, ten uh, uh, percent of sunlight. So if you have an object, anything, whether it's hair or a desk or a block, whatever it is, if it reflects back eight percent of the sunlight, then we call that color, if it's on hair, black. And when we see a reflection of about 43% of the full sunlight, we can't look at it anymore because it's so bright that our, our, the retina of our eye will burn. So your eyes automatically close. It's one of those reactions. You can't look at the sunlight because your eyes just close automatically. So, so when we have 43%, of sunlight reflecting back. That's what we refer to hair as lightest blonde. So the visual scale for us is between 8% and 43% of full sunlight. Now, of course, it, it works the same if you're indoors or, or, or outdoors, or if it's reflected light, or if it's uh, uh, light from an incandescent bulb or, or fluorescent bulb but other things influence it when it's not sunlight, okay? Now, you can't look directly into the sun. Your, 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 your eyes automatically close when the reflected light of, of an object, in other words, if an object is bouncing back to your eye and it's above 50% of the total sunlight, and you can't see it anymore. You can't, your eyes close automatically. Now, uh, think about if you walk out in the snow, a lot of the times you have to wear sunglasses uh, when you're in the snow or if you're skiing because the reflection of the sun is so bright that it blinds you. Now, look at the last point that I have here, down here. The human eye can see, easily see, 
40 different levels of light to dark. Now, now think about this. If black is 8% of light reflected, and it goes all, and we, we can see about 40, um, 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 there's about four levels within each level. So you've got 10 levels of color and, and four individual or, or minor levels in between. So therefore you can see 40 levels of light to dark. Now, in the hair color industry, we've created either 10 or 11, 10 or 11 levels of color, depending upon where you, you know, where you are. However, this part, this is important. When you have an 11 or a 12 series, the 11 or 12 series is not a hair color series, it's a lightning series. Now, I know that sounds a little confusing. But think about it. If you have a, a color and the maximum you can see is 10 levels of color, and, and that means that that level 11 or 11 or uh, uh, level 12 color has to have color in it. And that color is in fact level 10. I know that's a very bizarre the way that it is, but it's just one of those quirky things from our industry. It's the way that things work. Now here, what I've done here is I put a chart out to show, now this is approximate dye concentration per level. It changes from one manufacturer to the next. And this is also on the American system because notice that it has um, level 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. There is, there's in certain level, in certain European systems, they have 11 levels and you have a level in between here that's the, that's between 1 and 2 and it's darkest brown or brown black. Now there's something else that you that you will notice about this and that is that the numbers that that this is not a linear graph. So in other words um, between a level 10 color and a level 9 color oh wait a minute I put this on silent and it's ringing anyway um, between a level 10 and, and a level 9 color, you'll notice that it's not just double the dye load. In fact, it's 1.5 goes up to 3.5. But then look at what happens when you jump from a level line, level 9 to a level 8 color, which is a, which, which is a, uh, a light blonde. So this is lightest blonde. This is very light blonde. This is light blonde. But notice that the jump here, it whoops what happened the, oh, that the jump here is in fact double the difference between a nine and an eight three um 3.5 and 3.5 equals uh seven but look between an eight and between an eight and a seven between a light blonde and a medium blonde then it jumps up three more points so it doesn't it isn't double what you what what you what you think here? In fact, it's only it's only three points higher, three percent higher. Now th these numbers are not uh, concentrations of grams. Uh, these are these are based on molecular weight. Uh, so these these numbers are just units. They're they're not numbers as we as we know them. We use them in the lab. Is what I'm saying. Uh, because the progression of dyes per level is not linear, you cannot mix a level 10 with a level one and get a level six. Now, let me go back and let me show you. Whoops, again, I went the wrong way. Now, if you have a level 10 color and it's got 1.5 percentage uh, units of dye in it, and a level one color has about 40 units of dye. Now look at the total, 
together, that comes to 41.5 divided by two because there's an ounce and an ounce. And that means your total is about 20, uh, a little bit less than 22, right? Now look in the chart here. So what happens is you've created a light version of dark brown. So the only time that you can do two colors uh, that are similar is when you're mixing two colors that are one away from the target. So in other words, if you need a six, you can mix a 10, uh, you can mix a, a seven and a five to get a six because that will give you almost exactly what you want. Sometimes it's off by a little bit, but it's usually pretty clay, pretty close. Let me see what Trey says here. Trey says, on a level six, would gold be the lightest followed by copper red? Okay, this is interesting. Um, levels have nothing to do with tonality, even though tones are in fact, we do give them levels, but you can have, you can have a, a level 10 gold and you can have a level 10, 10 uh, red orange, which is copper. You can have a level 10 neutral, in which case um, you would still have approximately the same amount of, of units of dye, but remember dyes weigh different amounts. And so you would not have uh, exactly the same amount in each tube. Um, but it's a really good question, Trey. Uh, yes, neutrals, or excuse me, tonality is part of the system, but it's not what the system is based on. And yes, ash can be the darkest, particularly when it's a blue ash, but it can also be a super light ash, almost platinum or silver, okay? Now, let me go back one more. Now, I, I already said this, you can't mix them. Now, let me go one more. Now, here's the, here's the, this is the American level system here, one through 10. And here, notice that I've included darkest brown or brown black, which is part of the European system. And notice that the numbers here, so from, from, uh, uh, oh, Guys, you have to excuse me for something. Somebody's knocking on my door. Hold on. Do whatever you have to do. Oh, okay. Ah, I apologize for that. My maintenance men are here. I live in a big New York City apartment building and they've come to install some electrical stuff. Sorry, guys. Anyway, um, and you'll notice that they jump by about 3.6%. Uh, this is, so in other words, it's almost four. But in that 3.6%, you can see each individual um, uh, percentage. So therefore, you can actually see four levels within each one. Now, notice here that what I've done is I've done a, a visual representation of the, of the percentage of light reflection. Now, that's different than the, than the, uh, what we were talking about later, um, earlier. The percentage of light reflection is how we see color. Now, you can have a dark blonde or a medium blonde or a light blonde that's any tonality that you want. However, they will be slightly different depths within the individual level, depending upon the tone. So back to what Trey was asking earlier, if, if I have a, a dark blonde, but it's a golden dark blonde, it will appear lighter than an ash dark blonde, which will appear much cooler. 
Uh, so Trey has another question here and he says, does the light reflection or absorption of the tone influence the lightness? Of yeah, it absolutely does. Because if you have, um, remember that inside each level, there's three additional ones. So you have four different levels of color um, uh, at each one. Uh, I'll show you another uh, slide here in a second. And uh, well, actually, let me just go to it right now. Oh, no, that's not it. What, what happened to it? Oh, let me go back, go back, go back. Okay, let me look here. Now, okay, let's just say that we're working with level six, which is dark blonde, almost universally, almost everyone uses dark blonde at, at level, you know, uh, thing. But a, but a dark blonde, remember, dark blonde, before you reach the transition level of lightest brown, you have uh, 13, 14, 15, uh, uh, you have two, you've got 2% more dye in here. However, when you remember there's four different levels with inside here. So the, the, the gold one would be, would be a more, a lighter looking, a more a translucent version, whereas an ash color would be a, a, a cooler looking, um, deeper looking, but still within the same level. I hope that, I hope, you know, sometimes I don't, I listen to myself and I'm confused, even myself. Oh, okay, now Donna, Donna has said, I, I was speaking about dye weight being different. Is this where the confusion about red molecules being smaller or larger and reasons for fading come in? Absolutely. Um, first of all, um, uh, the size of a dye molecule, uh, they're almost all identical. They're so tiny that they're microscopic. And, and you, well, you can't, even with a microscope, you, uh, w unless, you, unless you understand what it is, you can't see individual molecules. So they're, they're so tiny, but when they go inside the hair and they develop, they develop into large molecules that are trapped inside the hair. And they're, they're, there's almost no difference in size between um, uh, molecules of, of, of color. Uh, there are slight differences, but they're so minute that it, it really makes no difference at all. Uh, uh, the reason, that color is trapped in your hair is because it grows into a very large molecule when you are, uh, when it's uh, oxidized. Um, color fading has, uh, the reason that colors fade and they don't fade equally is because you don't have equal parts of each color inside of, in, in, if you have a blended color. So in other words, if you have, if you have a blended neutral color and you, th th there's no way you can have neutral without it being um, with multiple um, couplers uh, because otherwise it'll, it'll be green or it'll be reddish or it'll be um, uh, ashy looking. So what we do is we take one single dye and then we combine it. But if you have a blended color and it's a, an auburn shade, you have no idea how much red is actually in the color. And even though it's bright, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean there's a lot. It just simply means that it's bright. It's a bright molecule. Um, the, the more neutral or, or gold that you add to, a, um, to a, an auburn color, the more muted the color becomes. Let me see. Uh, that's my knowledge base also. I, oh, um, that's fascinating because Donna says that uh, she, she gets into some really interesting discussions uh, regarding this uh, online forms. Um, Donna, if you go to the, to the Master Colors program from last year and look up the, uh, or uh, excuse me, don't go to the Master Colors, go to the um, YouTube and uh, look, look at all of my videos that I have here. I have one and I did a whole bunch of dye weight and I actually put the dye weights 
on the screen and uh, so that you can see how much they weigh and um, how they're almost all uh, I identical. There's so little difference between them. Um, um, I'll search for it if, if anybody uh, can't find it, um, just let me know and I will, uh, uh, I'll repost it just to be safe. Okay, where was I? Okay, we already talked this, we've seen this already. So now we're gonna go on to eye color and skin tone and why they're important, why I think they're important. Now, first of all, there's three main, uh, three main categories of eye color, blue, green, and brown. Now, yes, I know that there are many, many, many different eye colors, but these are the three main categories that almost everything else falls under. There are occasional strange ones, but, but th this is where all of them um, pretty much fall under. Now, each color of your eye gives you an indication of how the hair will react to either a dye or a bleach. And here's what I'm talking about. First of all, blue eyes. Blue eyes contain a very small amount of eumelanin that's found on the back of the iris. Now this is the same eumelanin that gives you hair color and skin tone. But those people with blue eyes with one exception are generally the easiest hair to lighten or to change or to bleach or to do anything you want with it. Generally, they're the easiest people with blue eyes, but there's an exception. And the exception is when there's a gold ring or there's gold flecks in the eye, because that is a, that's a caution, caution, caution. And I'll explain why in just a second here. Now, green eyes, green eyes are actually blue eyes, but they have a little bit more eumelanin on, in, uh, on the front of the iris and they contain a second pigment and it's called lipochrome. Lipochrome is either yellow or yellow brown. So now think what I just said in the last one. Let me go back one slide. Oops, I went the wrong way again. Remember I said exception was gold ring or gold flex in the eye. Now, oh, again, once again, if you have a gold yellow or a ring around the eye and flex, that generally means not 100%, but generally it means that there's pheomelanin hidden in the hair, even blondes, and you can't see it. But boy, when you try to lighten it, do you get into trouble. You're, you, you get into a, a lot of problems with lightening hair that has hidden pheomelanin um, in it. Next. Now, brown eyes contain a larger amount of eumelanin on both the front and the back of the iris. Now, the, the larger the amount of eumelanin, the darker the brown will look. And... The darker the brown, the more difficult to lighten natural color. The darker the brown, the larger the granule that holds the pigment, the natural pigment inside. And if you have hazel eyes or green brown eyes, that means you've got a red pigment and you are doubly in trouble because if they're darker green brown or they've got a golden uh, uh, ring around them or flex in them, you are, you're going to pull red, red, red and not be able to lighten the hair to the palest possible color without doing tremendous damage to the, to the structure of the hair. Now, the, the next thing is the, uh, the depth of the skin because the depth of skin color is an indicator of the lightest the hair can be safely bleached. 
And why? Because the natural protein of human hair is yellow. And the darker your skin, the darker the yellow. And that's why not everyone can be, ble can be bleached to pale yellow. That's part of the problem. You can't get all the way up to the palest yellow color on everyone. Uh, and consequently, not everyone can be silver or platinum unless you buy a wig. Okay. Now, look at what I've done here. Not everyone can be lightened to a pale blonde without excessive damage. Alkalizing hair protein, uh, in other words, uh, whenever you put a, a hair color product on it, it changes it from uh, to, to more of a yellow color. And the darker your skin, the darker the yellow of the protein. And here I've done uh, uh, three different um, skin tones. This would have been a lighter skin. This is sort of a medium skin. And this is a, a, a dark skin person. And notice that even though the number of units are the same in all of them, the protein or the yellow um, of the, the protein of the hair is stronger in the darker skin person. Remember, this is light skin, medium skin, dark skin. Okay, one more. Now, texture. Here's, for me, texture is one of the most important things when formulating for hair color. And here I'll tell you why. Fine, medium, and coarse hair all react differently to a formula. So if you put the same formula on three different people, you don't end up with the same color, the same final color. And the reason is because that in fine, medium, and coarse hair, you, you have to change the amount of melanin. So the coarser the hair, the more melanin for it to be the same depth as fine hair. Let me show you an example of this. Now here, what I've done is I took three beakers of fine, medium, and coarse, and they represent hair, fine, medium, and coarse hair. And I put the identical amount, and I actually have a uh, melanin, um, and I keep it uh, here um, at home, and I use it uh, in the lab, and I use it when I'm creating, uh, when, I, when I'm testing things. And I put the identical amount in each of these three beakers, with an equal amount of water. And notice that on fine, medium, and coarse, the coarse hair is the lightest color because they all contain the equal amount of eumelanin. When we test color, we test all hair color on medium textured hair, unless it's specifically designed for, for uh, Japanese hair or South American hair. We always use. Uh, we always test here in America, we always test on medium textured hair. Now, what you see here is fine, medium, and coarse textured. This is another variation of what I showed you two slides ago. It takes less pigment in fine hair to be the same color as, as coarse hair. So even though these have different amounts, fine, medium, and coarse have different amounts of pigment in them, they're still all the same color. All right. Now here's the way that it looks when we, when we lighten it slightly or we break the base, fine hair, medium hair, and coarse hair. Now, it would be a mistake to think that there's more red in the coarse hair. It's simply there's more pigment in the coarse hair. So assuming that there's no, that there's no uh, phaomelanin, that it's all eumelanin, 
then you would still see reddish color up here when you lighten the hair, but it will be stronger in coarse textured hair than it is in medium or in fine textured hair. But then let's take it one step further. If I tint all of these, the fine hair comes out exactly the color you want or possibly even a little bit darker because it absorbs a lot of the pigment. Now, medium textured hair, which is what we test on for everything, is that generally ends up being the right color. But whenever you put hair color on coarse textured hair, you almost always end up with a warm result unless you take, unless you take the steps to ensure that that warmth is not there. Now, let me go back here to the fine hair. Remember what we learned many, many, many years ago when we were in beauty school, and it was for finer textured hair, or for you know, particularly um, uh, finer textured white hair, you always went a little bit lighter on the formula. Well, the reason you went lighter on the formula is because it would, it would suck in too much color and look darker than you intended it to be. Now, contributing pigment. Okay, now I just showed you pictures that showed you the coarser the texture of the hair, the brassier it appears when it's lightened. And that's the reason for that is because there's more pigment in coarser textured hair. But not only does the texture influence the brassiness, it also influences the tonal choice of the color that you're going to change the color, you're going to change the hair to. So in other words, if you're going to uh, lighten hair that is, that is uh, coarse textured, you might want to have extra uh, ashiness in the color to compensate if you want a neutral appearance. Remember, now this is, a, this is the same thing that I showed you before, but, it's, but I'm, saying this, I'm saying it's slightly different. The coarser the, 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 the hair, the brassier it appears because there's more melanin. Therefore, on coarse textured hair, you have to adjust your formulas if you don't want to see um, warmth. Now, finer texture hair can take less processing time and it can often use 10 instead of 20 volume developer. You can use lower volume developer even for gray coverage if the hair is fine textured. Sometimes you use a lighter formula, you use a lighter shade formula, but remember that finer textured hair is the easiest hair to damage. Coarse textured hair, sometimes you've got to go from 30 to 45 minutes of processing and, and to let all the color get into the hair and to process properly to its fullest um, uh, 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 size. And sometimes you need a higher volume of developer, um, for, particularly for gray coverage. Instead of 20, you might need 25 volume. And you need a heavier concentration of dye, which means you can either add concentrates to your hair color formulas, or you can uh, tweak them by adding a slightly deeper uh, version of the color uh, that you're creating. Now, this is something that most people do not pay attention to. Uh, wait a minute, Donna said something else. I was taught to lessen the timing, not adjust the formula for finer hair. You can do that if you want. You can do either one. Uh, it makes no difference to me. However, remember, um, if you shorten the processing time, your color generally, not always, but generally will fade a little faster because the, the dye 
the molecules have not completely developed to their maximum size. Okay? Now, notice what I say here, that texture is very important because it varies by Asian, by uh, ethnic background. Think about uh, Japanese hair, which is generally very coarse and very straight, and is some of the most difficult hair to do anything with to, to change the color. But so is Middle Eastern hair. Think about uh, uh, people, have you ever had someone in the salon who's from Persia, um, uh, from I Iran, Iraq, uh, or from uh, um, any, of the, any of that area around there, Northern Africa um, places? Um, they can be very difficult uh, sometimes to work on their hair. Whereas European hair tends to be more medium and finer textured hair, whereas South American hair tends to be um, generally much coarser hair, native South Americans. I'm not talking about uh, South Americans that have, that have uh, a US um, uh, or European uh, blood in, intermixed with them. And then African hair. Now, the funny part about African hair is if you go all the way down South, to South Africa, you've got medium and fine uh, and coarse textured hair. But if you go into the middle of Africa, you generally have medium textured, but super curly hair, which, has, uh, which is another whole group of problems that you get into uh, when, when working on it, when lightening and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. So you have to think about the ethnic background when somebody, if you're working on somebody from, uh, from Japan, uh, believe it or not, it's actually easier to, to bleach Japanese hair all the way up to a, a yellow color, but it's very difficult to get it to pale yellow because the hair, uh, you dissolve the protein of the hair. Same thing with Middle Eastern, whereas European hair, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty much a breeze to lighten it. Okay. Now, last topic is translucency versus opaqueness. Now, with reference to hair color depth, translucent means a lighter version of one color, of a color. But opaque means a deeper version of the same color. So you can have translucent and opaque, medium brown, light brown, dark blonde, you, because, and I'm gonna show you an example here in a second, you generally, the colors that we purchase from Europe, uh, those colors that are uh, Italian made colors, they generally tend to be a deeper version of color than the American version, which tends to be more translucent. Now, here's a fascinating thing about there's four levels within each major level. So if I, I took light brown here, so light brown, you can actually see four different levels of light brown. And the more opaque one would be uh, if you were using more of an, a European color, it would appear darker. Whereas American color tends to be more translucent. And it's, it's a preference on my part because uh, as you'll see on the next slide, it's much easier to change translucency to darkness than it is the opposite to lighten color um, uh, that's already too dark. But notice there's A, B, C, and D. Each one of these is a, is a slightly deeper version. So A is the translucent, um, the most translucent of a color before it gets one level lighter. Then uh, B is a little bit more depth, C is a little bit more depth, and then D is where you run into the more, the most opaque version of a color before it becomes the next darker color. I know that's it's a lot, but whatever. Oh, Trey, Trey says a lot here. Let's see what Trey says. Um, okay, um, Trey says that for him, uh, translucent is natural color with highs and lows, 
oh, opaque means inky, almost small pox. This is the way it's been described for many, many years. Highly saturated monotone finish. And okay, now, first of all, a couple of things. One of the reasons um, that natural color looks what you're calling translucent is because one head of hair color does not contain identical um, fine, medium, or coarse uh, hair throughout the entire head. It's a mixture and a hodgepodge of many different uh, textures of hair. That's why when you put a color on it, you get multiple levels of finished color, finished result. But when you have a very monotone finish, which means it's all looking identical, it's, it's generally because the color that you have used is, is deeper than the color designed for medium textured hair. Uh, translucency, the reason that I prefer translucency is that it, it makes no difference whether it's a liquid to a, or a cream formula. Um, it's just that you can make a, you can make a liquid color opaque simply by changing the dye load. Um, but the original uh, dyes in America, uh, the Wella, the Rue, the um, um, Clairol, they were, they were primarily translucent. And then you made them darker by adding a darker shade. Uh, longer lasting color doesn't have to do so much with whether it's opaque or translucent, but what it does have to do with is two things, the timing, how long you leave the color on, and how blended the color is. In order for a color to be, for a, an individual shade of color, for instance, a red shade, in order for a red shade to be longer lasting, you have to have less, um, uh, a, a smaller amount of softening uh, or gold or neutral in the formula. The more gold or neutral you have in the color formula, the faster a, a red color will fade. The same thing, well, it doesn't apply to everything. For instance, um, gold colors, uh, excuse, not gold colors, blonde shades tend to fade the least, not because uh, they they actually fade the least, but because they're lighter shades, and therefore, even when they fade a little bit, the hair is already light. So it, it's an optical illusion. Darker colors tend to fade the fastest because as soon as there's a little fadeage in a darker color, it, it, they they tend to become warm, uh, uh, reddish looking, and uh, they, they get. Uh, uh, bizarre tones and lighter, lighter, lighter. Uh, Donna is asking, are we talking about natural color or formulas or formulas? Uh, Trey was just talking about um, what he what, what what his interpretation of translucent and opaque meant. Um, uh, but translucency and opaqueness applies to everything. Uh, anything, can be more translucent or a lighter version at the same level, or it can be more opaque uh, at the same level. And that applies to any tonality whatsoever. Now, oh, and this is what I said earlier. For me, the reason that I prefer um, uh, American color more translucent um, because it's easier to make an American color more opaque-like uh, than it is to make a, an opaque color more translucent. Because when you lighten the dye load, unless you know specifically what's in it in a blended color, 
you're not lightening, uh, you're not lightening it equally. Uh, so in, in other words, if you're using um, a, a golden brown shade and you don't know how much gold, how much brown, how much uh, uh, neutral, how much, um, uh, sometimes they have a little bit of our red, red in them. If you don't know what's in it uh, and you dilute it, you don't have a clue as to what you're using um, unless you're diluting it only with clear. That's the only way you can keep uh, the tonality the same, but less intense. That was a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me see. Oh, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Today's class is great. I love hearing from you. Um, one more thing here, and that is part four. Next, um, on, on May 1st, I'm going to do uh, part four. And I'm only going to have one topic, and it's going to be salt and pepper hair. Now, the reason that I'm going to have only one topic is because I think it's one of the most important topics that we can discuss uh, because, uh, uh, first of all, the primary reason that people get their hair colored, aside from highlighting, I'm not talking about highlights, uh, primarily it's, it's, it's because they're going gray and they're, they want to, and you're going to work on salt and pepper hair. It can be any percentage, uh, formulas change, tones change. Uh, and everything comes into play, but I, it's so important that I think that uh, uh, it should have an entire hour just for itself. Uh, and I'll talk about the many different ways that we can color salt and pepper hair, and um, it'll be available for anyone to sign up this, I don't know if it's tomorrow or the next day, but it, it'll be it'll be up after uh, just a day or two, and um, and everyone will be able to sign in. Uh, anything else uh, from anyone? Uh, okay, Trey. Uh, Trey says again, he knows times are changing, but I'm with the translucent tribe. Um, so am I, uh, Trey. I happen to to like translucency a lot better than opaqueness. Um, uh, the answer to Tristan, um, uh, I know I'm not going to ABAs to the show because um, they won't give you a booth at the Chicago show uh, unless you, uh, uh, this is what the rules used to be, unless uh, they won't give you a classroom and I'll only work in classrooms unless you have a booth on the floor. And I'm not willing to spend the multiple, multiple thousands of dollars necessary to do uh, beauty shows anymore. Um, it was just too much. Um, uh, so the answer is no, I'm not gonna be in Chicago this weekend. Uh, thank you, Mary, thank you, Donna. Uh, everyone else, uh, please. Um, oh, here's that crazy book that I wrote, um, Becoming a Master Colorist. For those of you that are interested, it's still available. You can either go to tomdispenza.com if you're in the US and uh, you can purchase it there. Or if you're out of the US, then you have to go to amazon.com. Same price, no matter where you go. Um, but there it is. Enjoy. Thank you, everyone. And we are finished.